Let's discuss the latest economic data out fresh today. Hello again, I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst of Digital Finance Analytics. We received two important data sets from the Australian Bureau of Statistics today. First, the latest ABS data on residential building approvals showed that the number of dwellings approved in Australia fell for the fifth straight month in February 2018. And in trend terms, that's down 0.1%. Approvals for private sector houses have remained relatively stable at around 10,000 units for a number of months, but unit approvals have fallen for five months. Overall, building activity continued to slow from its record high in 2016, and the sizeable fall in the number of apartments and high-density dwellings being approved comes at a time where a near record volume are currently under construction. And if you assume 18 to 24 months between approvals and completion, then we still have some 150,000 units or more, mainly in the eastern urban centres to come on stream, which will all add more downward pressure to home prices. This helps to explain the rise in the 100% loans on offer via some developers, plus additional incentives to try to shift already built or under construction property. Generally, such developments are fully priced, including various bells and whistles. And just like a new car, the moment the place is occupied, the value is likely to slip. As I've said before, and see the link below to my earlier video, should I buy now, be very careful when buying new or off the plan units at the moment. And especially if you are a property investor. Now here is the data displayed in original terms. Whilst house approvals remain relatively stable, unit approvals are much more volatile. And this is explained by the changing demand profile as overseas investors and local investment property purchases retreat. As we discussed recently, this is thanks to tighter lending standards making mortgages more difficult to come by, lower capital growth making investment property less attractive, and stronger controls on overseas investors, both in terms of moving capital to purchase and local regulations and tighter supervision. We can then look across the individual states as there are some significant variations. Among the states and territories, the biggest decrease in dwelling approvals in February was in the Australian Capital Territory, down 18.7% followed by the Northern Territory, down 7.2%, Western Australia, down 4.4%, Tasmania, down 3.4%, and South Australia, down 1.2%. There were small increases in New South Wales, up 1%, Queensland, up 0.9%, and Victoria, up 0.1%. Also note that approvals for private sector houses rose 0.2% in trend terms in February. And private sector approvals rose in Victoria up 1.1% and New South Wales up 0.8%, but fell in Queensland down 1.1%, South Australia 1.1% and Western Australia down 0.5%. Finally, the value of total building approvals fell 1.1% in February in trend terms and has fallen for five months and the value of residential building fell 0.1% whilst non-residential buildings fell 2.9%. Now let's turn to the second ABS data set. Separately, they released their retail turnover series for February 2018 and as normal, we look at the trend series which smooths out the data bumps. The trend estimate rose 0.4% in February 2018, and this follows a rise of 0.3% in January and 0.3% in December. So slightly up, but not stellar. And on an annual basis in trend terms, Australian turnover has risen 2.7% over the past year. Now, this is faster than wages growth or inflation. Remember, private sector wage growth is running at 1.9%. And we saw rises in food retailing up 0.3%, household goods retailing up 0.6%, 
other retailing up 0.4%, cafes and restaurants and takeaway food up 0.4%, and clothing and footwear and personal accessory items up 0.4%. Department stores fell 0.2% in trend terms. Actually, all the states and territories rose in trend terms in February 2018. Victoria up 0.6%, New South Wales up 0.3%, Queensland up 0.3%, South Australia up 0.3%, Western Australia up 0.1%, Tasmania up 0.2%, the Australian Capital Territory up 0.1% and the Northern Territory up 0.2%. Finally, the trends by state over time highlight the relative strength of Victoria compared with the national average. And it shows that several other states are performing much less well, especially those in the mining heavy areas. Given the state of the housing market, we wonder if the slight improvement this month is sustainable. We'll see. But we do know that households are raiding their savings to support their spending habits. This can only continue until savings are depleted as the savings ratio falls further. So combined, I think there is more evidence of the pressure in the economy and further reasons why we think home prices will keep falling and incomes will remain static. If you found this useful, please do like the post and add a comment or a question. I read them all. If you've already subscribed, thank you. I'm really grateful for your support. And if you are yet to subscribe, please do so to receive future alerts. I'm Martin North, the principal at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for taking the time to watch.